Artist down in, on his luck, but he refuses to give up. And it could be any kind of artist. It could be an, a painter, a writer, a poet, so on and so forth. He hadn't sold anything in a long time. Arms were crossed. He scrutinized the paintings displayed in the most modern of modern galleries. Behind him, a group of artists were discussing art. Glasses of wine held in their animated hands. He nodded to the group. Only one person returned a nod. He felt bad. There was a pressure on his chest. He didn't feel good, and he left the gallery as quietly as he came in. Walking down 8th Avenue, downtown, towards the 14th Street area, he saw a coffee shop nestled in a group of cheap buildings. Not really wanting coffee, he walked in anyway, thinking that he'd walk into a place where no one knew him, and he would have all the privacy he needed. He was sitting at the counter. Somebody tapped his shoulder, and he turned around. He was a young kid, tall, brown hair, good features, strong hands, paint plattered jeans. And the kid asked him, are you an artist? He didn't say anything at first. And the kid said, I thought so. The Times did a retro, an artist of the 70s. And the kid leaned forward and looked closer. He said, except for your white hair, you haven't changed that much. And in my art class, they still talk about you. The artist sat back. To him, the kid was bold, but he was refreshing. So they grabbed the corner booth, discussed art, and the artist made a point of giving him all the pointers about the New York art scene. Later, returning home, past the dome of St. George, silent and defiant in the early sunlight, he took a deep breath, walked upstairs to his slash studio apartment, and there waiting for him was the canvas. The north light beckoned. He held brushes in his hands. And for now, he was an artist once again. Thank you. You've been real.